We know that helicopters have become very popular in the last uh, few years, and in fact, in, in the last uh, year to year and a half, the electric minis have literally begun to perform at the same levels, and in some cases actually greater than their equivalent glow or gasoline powered uh, counterparts that have been around for a long time. What I'd like to do is give you a comparison of what is considered state of the art today in terms of the control system, the servos, the electronics, what's used in the more mechanical style birds like this one over here on the left and then we're going to go into some detail and actually go through some setups how do you set AFR what is it how do you set ATV what is it how do you correctly set pitch gauge what if you want to have a 3D setup what if you want an FAI pattern type setup so let's go ahead and take a look at the two basic types of control systems this particular bird right here is a, a Thunder a Tiger Raptor it is a 50 powered bird, meaning that it has a glow engine that's 50 size, 5 tenths of a cubic inch, pretty traditional power plant. It has what's called a standard mechanical system here, a Thunder a Tiger has used for years in their design, the four point style swash plate, this item that you see right here. Well, what that means basically is, is that there's quite a number of links and bell cranks. You can see a bell crank here, you can see links coming off of the servos, same way coming up through to the head, with the end result being that the servos are indirectly hooked through to the swash plate, not a direct hookup. That's not a problem and they fly quite well, but it does mean there is much more in terms of mechanical items to wear and to adjust. Well, what I want to compare that to is this new system over here, and it's actually not new in the literal sense of the word. It's called CCPM, which is Cyclic Collective Pitch Management. What this system has that the mechanical standard bear doesn't have is a direct link between the servos. You can see a servo here, a linkage, and the swash plate, and there's nothing else in between. So it literally moves the swash plate with nothing in between when the servo moves. This bird again is, is the more traditional style bird and what I'd like to talk about briefly is the difference between the servo types. Uh, most guys know this but not everyone has converted over to the digital type servo. Let's turn this one on just so we can see it. I've got my transmitter here which has multiple memory in it meaning I can have any bird basically up to about 20 or 25 selected into the radio. I should have this uh, Raptor 50 in there. So we're going to turn the system on and it's, it's lit up and we're ready to go. What I basically want to show you, and you're not going to see much difference here watching it, but it, I, I want to describe it as we work it, is you can see the significant amount of bell cranks and linkages that are moving when I'm moving the servos. So for example, right in this area here, when I move the, uh, what would be aileron or right and left uh, uh, cyclic control, you can see that we're moving a fairly significant set of, of uh, linkages. Now, the primary advantage that has come about with the new digital servos, the type that are over in this bird, is that the power off of center, the amount of torque that's generated by the servo is significantly more in the digital servos. These work fine, there's no reason to toss them out, but it's a major jump ahead to go with the digital servos. So what I'd like to do is, is give you some, some specific detail on how you set up a bird that has the CCPM system, the small um, uh, T-Rex over here, the electric bird, and some of the, uh, the tips and, and how we do that. So let's go ahead and dig into it and uh, take a look at that uh, type of setup. One of those features that's used by almost every modeler are ATVs. Uh, they use different terminology between the brand uh, manufacturers uh, on the radios, but basically it's an adjustable travel volume is what ATV stands for. So well, let's just show you that and then I'd like to go into some fairly heavy detail and show you how you set up to another feature that's called AFR, which changes the full range of throw versus a single channel. So if we take a look at the Raptor 50 here, I'm on, I'm going to go ahead and go into our, our radio here and change the ATV setting itself on aileron. Right now we're set at 100%, but let's go ahead and change that to 10%, I'm obviously overstating it significantly, and work the servo. So here's maximum throw now that we've set it at 10%. You can see the servo's barely moving and I'm not even sure you can see that. Let me go up to 40 just so we can see the difference. There's 40 percent. Maximum stick throw, full right, full left. Now let's go back to where this bird actually flies, which is 100 percent, 
again on ATV, and the only thing we're changing is the right and left cyclic or aileron channel. Now we're back to 100%. And look at the difference. Huge difference. Key point to make, and I'm going to go over into the AFR system, is that ATV changes only an individual channel. You can change aileron, elevator, rudder, throttle, etc. It changes the endpoint adjustment only on that channel. What I'd like to do is get into a little bit more detail and show you how you set what's called AFR, which is adjustable function rates, as compared to an ATV. As a reminder, an ATV is simply sets an individual channel. It doesn't do any mixing between channels automatically, where an AFR allows us to do that. Why might we use AFR? Well, in the case of the helicopters with the CCPM type control system, we don't want any type of mixing in terms of linearity between the swash plate. I'll show you that here in a second. Let's go ahead and turn this bird on. First of all, we're going to flip our transmitter on. Now, one thing you always want to be very careful of because we're now dealing with an electric bird is until I turn on the throttle hold switch, the electric motor and the rotor specifically are going to be live when I plug it in. So double check that we're down, we're low stick, we've got all of our switches set in the default position so when we plug this in it's not going to fire up and beat us to death. Plug it in. What we're going to hear are two things. We're basically going to hear the electronic speed control, the ESC, go through its initialization routine. Now there we hear that. It's doing a crescendo and I'm not going to wait for it to get through the whole thing, but basically it's checking pre-programmed settings that we've put into it. For example, where it's at on battery protection and so on. But let's get into the AFRs. First of all, let's turn our transmitter switch on to uh, what I'm going to call complete protection mode and in this case I'm going to go in and activate an override program in this transmitter that's going to allow me to move the surfaces without engaging the motor even though I still have it plugged in. Let's check it carefully and slowly. Okay, we've got collective going up and down which is also our speed control and we're not getting any problems in terms of energizing the motor. So let's dig into AFR. What does it mean? First of all, when we set up a bird like this, this particular helicopter, as you can see, is a pretty high-end mini electric. It's all carbon fiber frames. We have the Align uh, uh, optional upgrade carbon fiber blades on it, and it has the CCPM head and most all of the aluminum or tighter tolerance upgrade parts. If we get into the AFR function, what I want to show you here is when we make the change on AFR, you'll see that we can adjust the range and thereby the pitch on the bird without changing the linearity between the swash plate. So let me move the swash plate again. If you look closely, you'll see that as I go up and down on pitch, three servos are moving. Pitch, what would be aileron on a fixed wing or right and left cyclic, and fore and aft cyclic or what would be elevator on a fixed wing. But if you look closely again, you'll see that the swash plate goes up and down without any differential being fed in, which would be like this. As it was going up and down, we saw the swash plate right, leaning to the right, the left, forward, backwards, etc. Now, going on over into AFR, I'm going to select that on the transmitter, go into the AFR screen, and I'm going to select the channels that I want to take a look at. If I go into this, I'm actually going to have a choice, starting with percentage, of movement that I can select. So right now, for example, this particular bird is set at 79% on aileron, which is right and left cyclic, 79% on elevator, fore and aft in the case of a helicopter, and 45% on pitch. So you can see the amount of range I've got in throw. There's high and there's low. Let's go ahead and change these, and I'm going to change them dramatically. We're going to change it down to 40%, 40%, and 20%. Now let's do the same movement and see what kind of range we get here full stick movement, you can see much, much less. There's low collective, there's high collective. Why do we want to change that? The reason we want to change it is once you've set up your bird with the servos in place, adjusted the servos so they're 90 degrees, everything's trimmed, you've got zero set at your swash plate center point for a helicopter, you can adjust how much pitch you get on high side, how much you get on low, and how much you get in the middle. What's different about this than ATV is when we go in on the more traditional style system, ATV, we can only change one channel at a time. Obviously, if we do that and don't keep the linearity we talked about, we're going to get mixed or we're going to induce differential into the rotor system. So again, you can see I've, redu I've reduced it to a fictitious amount 
and we've got a very small amount of, of change there. One thing I want to mention that's a really neat programming trick is because almost all of the computer radios today have multi-model memories. You can go in and set this bird up for a windy day. You can set it up for a smooth flowing type of flight or 3D flight by simply saving the model call this model one. We say this might be the amount of throw we want for a very windy day or we're just going to cruise around. And we save it as model one with the parameters we just set here for AFRs. Bird flies very smoothly. Let's go into the pitch side. Uh, there are small pitch gauges made exactly like there are on the larger birds. They're very inexpensive. This happens to be one uh, from a line that fits this size blade. We're going to take the pitch gauge and put it onto the, bl to the bird. Before we do that, Let's just talk for those guys that may just be new to rotary and have come across, what is the pitch gauge measuring? It's simply measuring the amount of change or deflection for the main blades when you put the stick or the cyclic stick or control collective stick in any given position. This particular pitch gauge and all of them read from a minus to a positive range. In this case, it's minus 10 to plus 10 range, and it's adjustable with this set screw. So the first thing we check is where are we at relative to the center position of the stick. Let's go ahead and put the pitch gauge on. I'm going to set the pitch gauge for a predetermined amount of zero. I've got it on there now, zero degrees. And then I'm going to bring my stick up to what would be the center point of the throw range for the transmitter. So I'm going to come up to center stick. And what I'm looking for quite simply is that the top edge of the pitch gauge is literally level with the fly bar itself, this bar that goes across that holds the paddles on. So you hold it like this, you take a look, and yep, sure enough, I'm right in line. I'm just simply eyeballing it, and you can see whether it's high or low. Then we go ahead and do the same thing at high range, go up to full collective stick, change this up to our maximum pitch. We're going to go up in this case to plus 9 degrees. Same check. Look down here. Are we lined up? Yep, we're exactly level. Last thing we're going to check, and this, by the way, is what's called a 3D setup. It's a full aerobatic setup. We're going to go to low stick on collective. So we come down to low stick, make the change on our, on our uh, pitch gauge. Now I'm going to go down to 9 degrees negative, lock it in, and check it, and see if we're okay. And the answer is yes. Now, if we were not okay, there are a couple places that you can change this. In most of today's fairly sophisticated computer radios, you can change the extremes with pitch curve. You can change the extremes with ATV, but I don't recommend it with a CCPM system. Remember, that's the direct linkage hookup here. Basically, go in and change it with the AFR. We talked about AFR just a bit ago, and the reason that it's important is we can make those changes throughout the whole range and not disturb the linearity of the swash plate itself. So if we found that we were off at any one of these given points, we'd go back into our AFR screen, change it whatever percentage you need to change on the transmitter, and simply cite it. Go through the mechanical check of whether you're lined up or not. If you are, you're set, and you're basically done with AFR. Helicopters are absolutely growing in leaps and bounds, and particularly the electric segment. While we happen to have used a mini electric today to demonstrate some of the finer points of adjusting ATVs, AFRs, and so forth, the larger helicopters in the 50, 60, and even 90 size are now coming out in electric power plant aircraft. The performance is absolutely phenomenal. One thing I can say is that we don't expect to see anything slowing down in terms of the technology breakthroughs in ESCs, electronic speed controls, batteries, and in motors. So it looks like the future is very bright for the electric segment in helicopters.